Um, you know, so something I feel like is so cool that you've got in your back pocket is, you know, Kelly Crutchman and the fact that she was one of my teammates, but her Olympic experience and, you know, for a lot of athletes, there's a lot of questions, especially because it's been this long gap between Olympics 2008, the last time softball was in the Olympics now all the way to 2021. So what's your relationship been like with Kelly and have you kind of tapped into that as a resource? Yeah. I mean, she's in here. I'm gonna bring her in, but, um, she's, she's been amazing. I mean, um, we have now dated for, um, a few years and I mean, it's just been, she was kind of with me in that struggle of, you know, in 2018, I talked about where it was like, just so hard on me and in so many ways. So she's brought such a good perspective for me and has been so positive. And she does have that experience. Like we we've talked about, I mean, we've talked stories all the time. She tells me about, you know, the 04 team and even 08 and just how, you know, different stories about you or how you guys trained or like, I can't believe you guys are doing this. You know, we used to do blah, blah, blah. And, and just, just cool stories about all of it. So it's definitely nice to, and comforting to know, you know, that someone who I am with understands the journey and the struggles and, and all of it. Kelly, how have you seen Allie grow in the last couple of years? A lot. Um, <laughs> my biggest thing, like when we first started dating, our, we were teammates on the U.S. team in 17, 16, I don't even remember, but um, I think it was the first time she didn't make the A team. Um, so it was interesting to see uh, how she reacted from that and handled that and where was she going to go from here. Um, you know, and I was tried to tell her stories about, I was never, you know, I was never on a world championship team. You know, I made one Pan Am team, but then I was on, you know, three Olympic teams. So, you know, I've been through those struggles of not being on the team and then being on the team and all those things. And it's all about how you react from it. And I think the biggest thing I've seen is just her, her determination and her, um, willingness to do everything that she can do personally for herself to make herself be in a better spot. Um, and she's seeing the, the repercussions of that, you know, being in the best shape she can, uh, going and playing in Japan and be vulnerable in that part of it. Um, and just making herself better, uh, I think, as a whole, as a person. And it's, it's paid off softball wise for her too. I've seen you guys, I think, uh, even like train together, which by the way, like just seeing Crutchy like training, although she has been now for a while, but like back when she played, she was just raw talent. Like she show <laughs> up and just like flat out dominate without even like lifting a weight. Right. So to see you guys train together and, you know, just being able to share, like we were talking about Ali, understanding, you know, of how crazy this life is, but also your dreams, your passions, your vulnerabilities, all of that. Yeah. And don't let her fool you. I still got to drag her out to, to do some of these workouts. She, but she puts gear on every now and she just caught me today. She threw some gear on. So she's awesome in that. But, um, but it is caught me. She's taught me so much too with training wise on like, for me, like we're the opposite in that, right? Like you said, like she can just go out there, whatever. And she's still like a thousand percent confident in who she is and her as a ball player. Whereas me, I'm not necessarily not confident, but I get my confidence from that training. And, and I just want to like, go, go, go all the time. And she's like, you're good. Like you don't need to, you know, fully dive in, you know, a thousand percent every day. Like you're good. Take a mental break. Like, so again, that perspective, she helps me. Um, I don't need to, you know, be going full go all the time. It needs to be, you know, I need to be at the peak in July. That's what I need to remember. <laughs> so my, my favorite part about working with her has been sharing like the hitter's perspective. I mean, I know she hit in college and, but she hasn't hit in, since, you know, consistently for quite some time. So giving her like the hitter's point of view of like, okay, on this pitch, what would you throw? Because this is what I know you're going to throw. <laughs> you know, kind of talking to her on the other side of it of, um, you know, what, what the hitter is really looking for. And then kind of like switching her train of thought into, you know, we know Jess pitchers are pr pretty predictable. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, that's how we win, but you know, that's how yeah, we hit so well, because they're just, you know, they threw the pitch we wanted all the time, you know, but just kind of talking to her about that. Like, I mean, I don't know pitching, but I know what I'm looking for as a hitter and just kind of helping her like change that train of thought. That's probably been the most, I think the most fun for me in helping and helping her with all of it. That is huge because I mean, most college pitchers 
and no offense, but this drives me nuts are, you know, robots in a lot of ways, because the calls are coming from the dugout to the catcher, throw down some signs. Yes, that's what I'll throw. I'm not saying you were, were this robot, but it, you see it, you know, calling college. So I'm like, where's the like, no, like she's on my plate. Like, this is what I want to call. And so you come from that, you know, growing up, you have the college atmosphere, which is very much coming from the coaches of what you should call. And it's, it's, it's combined. But now, like, this is your livelihood. Like, you throw the wrong pitch, it's your, your butt that's getting cut. It isn't the catchers. It isn't the coach that, you know, is telling you to call a pitch. And so to understand um, is huge. And honestly, it's, it's scary as a hitter when a pitcher actually knows why and how they're going to throw a pitch. Right. Yeah, it's so true. And it's been, I mean, it's been a still every day we're just, you know, go out and we're throwing out in the street right now and do, and we're still like, you know, talking the game with it. And, and it's crazy too, going from when I was in Japan throwing and I felt really good and getting, you know, sequences over there to then throwing to USA hitters is completely different too. So, you know, our last camp was even a challenge on, okay, how are we going to get these people out after one, they've seen me now five times in our inner squad, <laughs> you know, how am I going to do it versus, you know, what their, their plans are changing too, my plans changing. So all of it. So it's been really cool to, to just keep talking it out. Yeah. And you probably don't know this, but right now I'm helping the U S team because the coaches are all in head coaches for, you know, their college teams. So um, Erickson asked me if I would help them kind of just fill in. So, and that's been kind of fun for me as well to coach crutch. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What's, yes. You would what's die. That? I was, I was, uh, I was doing conditioning for a little bit <laughs> for them. So like te well, telling them to do conditioning. I feel like yes, right. yes, right. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't have me do it, but I can yeah. definitely tell you what to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No, I didn't know. So that's awesome that you're, you've been helping out and like, that's, that's huge in your experience of, Crutchy, have a lot of the players like been asking, I mean, what like advice have just from a team standpoint to understand kind of this whole process leading to Tokyo? Um, well, I think I tried to, this year is so unorthodox. So the, the teams that they're playing, they don't even know their schedule so much as when last year it was like, okay, you guys, this, this tour is, you know, just the tour is grinding, you know, like we play a lot of games, you're in a lot of cities, you, you're, you're doing a lot, like it, this is going to be hard, you know, and kind of talking to them about pacing themselves and not get like so amped for the first game. And you, you, you know, you don't get a hit, you're already in panic mode when you got like 40 other games left to go. Um, but this year I think is just kind of different. Um, but in the same time, I think it's been great for them because I think they're starting to realize who they are as a team and taking accountability for themselves. So as much because, you know, Erickson hasn't been around so much because he's, he has to be at USF this year. And, um, and then me and Kyla Hollis, we're both helping out. So we're kind of just letting them figure themselves out and, and, you know, hold each other accountable for the things that they need to hold each other accountable for, you know, I, I like to think about when Lisa used to yell at us when we didn't throw a perfect throw to, you know, yeah. to third base and she, you know, that's what they're starting to do, which is kind of, for me is really cool to see. Cause I think that's what made us so great was that we had a standard that we wouldn't let go of. It's so true. And I was actually talking about this with Bubba Nichols this morning of the how much she's learned from the U S team and the older players that she can take back to college. But like, it made me think of Lori Harrigan and like what you were saying with Lisa Fernandez is like, you really get to play with like a decade plus a variance of ages and experience and understanding. And if you could have that player, that's like going to get on you or tell you like how it should be done, then that, that to me is like, you're going to listen to more them more than a coach any day. And I love coaches, but there's nothing like your peers be able to tell you who what how to do something that's awesome so for you guys being I mean it's like super power couple right I think of Megan Rapino and Sue Bird like I mean you have two Olympic softball players you know how was there a decision for you guys to be more public with it and not hide and have something that's you know not something you're afraid to shy away from <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's been great. I mean, we, 
we are, you know, we're living together. We have been open about it from the start and we're just continuing to be us, which is super fun. And um, I think it's just cool on, you know, we talked about the softball side and, um, but just who we both are and that I can be me, she can be her and that's powerful. And then we can be us and that's, you know, even more powerful. And it's just been really cool to, to do that together and live, you know, our lives together, but then also go through this whole Olympic thing together. Um, so that's just a bonus, but, um, I think it's, it's been cool for us and, you know, we are, we're open about it and, um, love that we can be that way. And, you know, our, our circle is very supportive and, um, our families are very supportive. So we're very fortunate for that. Definitely. Yeah. And it's good to see, I mean, just how far, you know, the sport has changed and really just, the world <laughs> um, so that you guys can be who you are and honestly like I, I love just the idea even the fact that it makes me laugh like the, the the working out I mean the fact that Kelly's throwing gear on and catching in the street like I don't think anything says love more than that <laughs> if you're gonna, you hey, know, it's gotta be love it because if you know her I'm just well, knowing, that her, knowing how hard you throw like, <laughs> I won't do it without a mask though. I, I will not put, I don't know why, but put that mask on and I feel like a ninja warrior. I can catch anyone. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you guys for your time. Yeah. Thank um, you. I appreciate you. you.